Understanding how to instruct to a young child is one of the most important things we can do to help our children grow and learn through soccer. It's okay to have the games and drills, but if we don't know how to present them, they become less effective. If you ask most new coaches to describe a coach to you, they will conjure up an image of a high school, college or professional sports coach. This is where a big problem lies and why many kids are being coached as mini adults and not as tiny children. Nobody thinks of a coach as a person laughing, smiling and clowning around as if they were six years old, yet this is the most productive way to coach the young child. Delivering the correct information to the kids in the right way is essential. Without the right delivery and instruction, very little will ever be retained. So it's not just about the games and drills that we run at practice, it's how we get them to understand the how and why we play these games. The children you have are very easily influenced and impressionable. You can make this experience a positive one and create a soccer player for life. This section is going to help you in learning the correct ways to run an effective practice with some valuable hints on coaching a young child. A successful practice starts before you even arrive at the field. Planning and preparing is essential to run an effective practice. Noting down games and drills on the index card is useful to keep the practice running smoothly. You don't have to write down every detail, but just little points to help you remember, such as name of the game, field dimensions, how we play it, and the key reasons or coaching points. Always plan more activities than needed, because if something isn't working, then you have other games to fall back on, rather than resorting to a scrimmage as many people do when they have run out of ideas. Keep the notes in your shorts or pockets to refer to. Practices should be kept short. It's better to have 60 minutes of quality soccer than a longer practice where technical information that you have delivered has been forgotten because of boredom. Young children have short attention spans and low stamina levels. We want them to go home hungry and wanting more soccer. Concentrate on just one main area each practice and just a few basic coaching points. So structuring practices should be based around one topic such as dribbling or passing. Children will learn through repetition and more repetition. So now we are prepared for practice with our session plan on our chosen area for the day. Read through your plans so you fully understand what you're doing and be prepared to offer the kids some magic. You should arrive at the fields earlier than everyone else and set up the first game or drill. This creates a great impression for kids and parents. This is how we set up a grid. We put a cone down every five steps and I like to call this area Soccer Island. When setting up the area, be sure to check for safety concerns. Look out for sprinkler heads, puddles or dips and mark them off with a cone. Playing games inside a grid helps because it teaches the kids about boundaries and perimeters. Equipment that will be useful for practices are Pennies Get a set of two different colors A whistle Clipboard A basic first aid kit A pump A supply of size 3 balls Cones Get some different colored cones Pop-up goals are very useful to help teach the game. An extra set of shin guards, as some kids again will forget. Extra water. When the kids arrive, you should be prepared and ready. Dress like a coach. If you have sports shorts or pants and t-shirt, it looks so much better than work clothing. The kids will then see you as the coach and not just another mum or dad. So we're all planned and prepared, look in the part, and set up ready for the practice ahead. As each kid arrives, make sure you greet him or her and their parents. Make them feel welcome and comfortable. Ask non-soccer related things about anything from the shirt they're wearing to what they did at the weekend. Become a friend first and coach second. Encourage all parents to stay for practice. If kids arrive early or you're waiting for a few others to arrive, get them actively moving around with a soccer ball. Thigh juggles are a great thing to do. This will work on their eye, legs and hand coordination as well as keep them entertained. Get them to count how many they can do. 
So now we have all our kids here and we're ready to rock and roll with our practice. First of all we should get to know every kid's name. The way I do this is by finding out each kid's name and give them a funny name that also begins with the first letter of their name. Isabella the Iguana, what a great name. Madison the monkey, I like that. And your name is? Gabby the gorilla. Gabby the gorilla. Can everybody remember my name? Dean the donkey. You can ask them to think of their own funny names. The word association really works and helps you remember names. Using each individual's name is essential when instructing. To give praise, encouragement and positive reinforcement. So we now know everybody's name and they know yours. Give yourself a funny name too and become one of them. I'm Dean the Donkey. When we instruct, we have to consider that we are speaking to tiny kids who need short, sharp, simple direction. The way we present and terminology and tone use is essential in getting our information across to the kids. Here we are going to show you how to instruct. When we start a new game or drill, get everybody in close. Give them a countdown so they get in quickly. Make sure the sun is in your eyes and not theirs, and try and have their backs to their parents to avoid distractions. Get their attention by playing Coach Says. Coach Says Hand on Shoulders. Coach Says Hands on Head. Coach Says Hands on Eyes. Coach Says Hands on Mouth. Get down on one knee so you're at their eye level. An interesting fact is 70% of communication is done through the body, 23% through tone of voice and only 7% through words. When talking, instruction should be slow, using simple, easy to understand words. The tone should be kept soft but interesting. Making eye contact with the kids and having them focus on you is essential. Never tower above them or wear sunglasses. Be animated using hands, arms and legs. This keeps their attention. Sound excited and enthusiastic when instructing. This in turn excites them. Instruct only the basics of the game first and then start playing as quickly as you can, avoiding long speeches. You can add more information during play. Check out the Wacky Racers game later in the DVD to see it all put into action. When we play a game, add in the coaching points while playing. Stop and add in the coaching point or new rule and then continue. After we have finished playing, bring all the kids into a group again as before and recap what the game taught us and why we played it. Ask questions so they have to answer. Keep it interactive with demonstrations from kids if you can use them. This keeps their attention. So we have the basics on instructing and how we present. The last thing we need to do is learn how to structure practices. Practices should be organized in five very easy sections. The first being the warm up or energizer. This is to get the kids moving around and listening to command. This can be done with or without soccer balls. Secondly, we move on to stretches. It's good to get kids into a habit of stretching from an early age. We then move on to the demonstration of the technique that the practice is focused on, such as how we pass the soccer ball, and we get the kids to practice just the technique for a few minutes. We move this technique into fun games and drills, and finish off with a small scrimmage. Finish practice with a teen charm with all hands in the middle, and get kids to give you a high five before they leave. So our practice should include 1. The warm-up or energizer 2. Stretches 3. The technique 4. Fun games and drills and 5. Small-sided scrimmage Super Hints Here is a checklist of super hints that will help you run effective practices and become a better coach. When instructing to the kids Always make sure the sun is in your eyes and not theirs. Make sure their back is to the sun. Setting up a grid is very important. Make sure kids always know perimeters and boundaries. You can name it Soccer Island. 
Always stay positive. If a kid does something wrong, never shout negative words. State a positive comment and then give them the correct way to do the skill. Say something like, excellent job Lauren, next time why don't you try doing it like this? And then demonstrate or tell them. Smile is totally contagious. Plan sessions. You'll notice the difference and so will the kids. When speaking, get down on their level, on one bended knee and make lots of eye contacts with the kids while using their names. Interact. When demonstrate or talking, make it a conversation, not a lecture. Ask regular questions to the kids to keep them alert and involved. After each game and each session, recap what you have worked on and the main coaching points. Again, ask questions. Make sure you learn every kid's name as soon as you can and refer to their name as often as you can. A way I remember names is by associating the first letter of their name with an animal or fruit. For example, Edward the elephant, Alex the apple, Michelle the monkey. It's amazing but it really helps you remember names. Try it. Ask questions before and after practice regarding non-soccer related things. Become their friend first and coach second. Always take plenty of water breaks in hot weather. Make sure kids drink during breaks. And take extra water as kids and parents will forget. Remember, safety is our number one priority. Take a high factor sun lotion for kids who have forgotten or need it reapplied. Never apply the lotion. Always get them or another kid to do it. Take extra balls and shin guards to practice. Carry a basic first aid kit to practice with gloves and make sure you have easy access to a phone in case of emergency. Don't let kids go to the restroom by themselves. They should always go in a pair or group or under supervision from a couple of parents. Use invisible coaching to disguise coaching points. Play fun games to teach the skills they are learning. Always keep a supply of balls close to you and around the boundaries in which you are playing in. This will keep the flow of the game as you can restart with the nearest ball when a ball goes out of play. Use a magic word. I use bananas. And tell the kids when they hear this shouted, they have to be as quiet as a mouse. Try it, it works, and will get the kids very quiet very quickly. It's ideal to get an assistant or assistants to help you coach. One coach to every four or five kids is ideal. Get to know the game yourself. Watch soccer on TV or go to an adult game to help understand it. Practice yourself with a ball and then you can find out exactly how difficult the games are. Familiarize yourself with the basic laws of the game and regulations. This will help you in becoming a better coach. Attend coaching clinics if they're available. It's a great chance to learn new things and meet other soccer coaches. Keep a logbook and record each kid's improvements socially, mentally and physically over the weeks of the season. This will help in defining the success of the child at the end of the season and more importantly, the success of you developing the child. Remember to follow the simple philosophies at all times and you won't go wrong. Most importantly, have fun 